going to do is uh, I had a Discord channel that were, was uh, showing how to do work area manipulation with uh, with Giants Editor and using the i3D file. I just wanted to show how you can do this with just an XML um, so you don't have to export to i3D. Um, unfortunately the, the model I'm picking here um, doesn't have a fold option. I was going to show you how you could actually change it with the folding option. You could actually in game manipulate it manipulate it in and out but unfortunately spreader doesn't have that doesn't have foldable as a, a specialization I don't want to get into the vehicle specialization in this video I just want to kind of try to make this as short as possible basically just as an explanation on how work area works um, and this is a bad example of it. well I say bad example but it's just how a typical vehicle works it's a little different I guess so what you have is a start width and a height in your work area and it's basically just like it says it's a start it's how wide you want to go and then your height now this one's a little weird because it has a fan shape but once again when I said it was a bad example it's actually a good example to show how you can manipulate that shape a little bit now here's a just a cultivator now this is how it usually works you have your start which is where your work area starts then you have your width which is the other side of your work area and your height which gives you basically your depth well, what I'll do a lot of times I'll come in here and I'll do a, a create primitive in a cube and what I'll do is I'll take this cube and I'll stretch it up to say like 10 and do 0 .01, 0 .01 on the scale just to give me an idea where that's going to lay I'll just control X to cut that out control V to paste it into the start and I'll just hit control C control V control V so what this is doing is it's basically giving me a layout to show me where that area is. Now you could put a plane in there and you know get creative like that, but it just gives you an idea of what's going on. So once again, that's where that work area is going to start. So it's up towards the front of that cultivator. That's how wide it's going to be. And then your height is how far back it's going to be. Um, basically it's just giving you... Um, the area that, that cultivate is working. That's why it's called carry, I guess. I was lost for words there. But what you have to do, um, it, it gets a little confusing when I first started this. I was just trying to mani manipulate these numbers and I, I had to understand what was going on, I guess. I was lost for words again. But so it, when you have a, a start of 3 and a width of a negative 3, you basically take the difference there so you have a three a negative three the difference of that is six so this is actually going to be six meters because um, your the center of your vehicle is zero so if you're a, a negative three and a positive three the difference between a negative three and a positive three is six um, death is pretty simple because it just it just moves back that just gives you so for example you know if we're at six right now at three if we want to make this uh, twelve then you would just put six and a negative six and now you're a total of six wide and you would even have to change well I take it back you do have to change your height or you're gonna have a funny shape you don't want to do the same thing here you want to make that a six oops mid nine to give it a square shape so that's that's a basics on how the work area the width and the height works on a basic piece of equipment if we close this out do not save because it's uh, in game so here's where it gets a little odd because you have this shape here so what it's doing now is it's starting it in at the center a little further back from the equipment because Z is your depth back like so if you look at the Z over here it's changing control Z to switch that back now your width is where you want it to fan out um, so it's basically putting that um, that triangular shape now this this effect is what's going on here if we hide that, that that's kind of a cheating way because it's got an effect that's a whole different part and we'll get into that a little bit later in the vehicle here but your start your width and your height is actually giving that depth out in the fan shape so once again if we can go create print in a primitive cube and then make this 10.01 we'll just copy that one paste it there and we just take this control C control V control V control V delete that one so now in your work area, if I highlight, if I click that, it'll highlight them all, that's going to be your work area. It's just basically like it showed in the effect. It's going to fan out to here um, for your width, and then for the height, it's going to find out 
to this height over here so it's basically computers just making an area up with a triangle so that's once again a basic knowledge of work area like I said it just explains how the start width and the height how those work together um, so enough of that for right now we're actually going to go into the XML I'm going to show you how you can manip manipulate those uh, those nodes um, so if what I did is I'm just opening up the coon uh, fertilizer spreader I, I'm not going to get into how I do the XML and the mod description how to pull it out of the game because I already showed that in another video I'm just basically like I said, I'm going to show how we can actually manipulate this not have to use an i 3 d because basically our mod is simply the XML and the mod descript and you can see very small files not that the i3d is a large file but when you start moving those files in it does start to add I and mean, when you have a server you will appreciate getting rid of some data space so if we look at that guy um, it's this guy here so the shape file alone is 1.77 megabyte and i3d is fairly small but as you can see it just starts to add up you start adding images and everything else and you just don't need it because everything's called for these is calling for everything in the XMLs, the mod descript and the actual vehicle XML. So, back to the work areas here. What we're going to do is we're going to look for configuration. Um, the nice thing about configurations is when this configuration activates, it's going to look for these object changes I'm going to throw in. Now, you could do this in wheel changes, and like I said, I was going to do foldable, but we can't do foldable because the spreader doesn't have as a specialization. So, all I'm going to do is in this build unit configuration I'm just going to add a couple of lines and if you want to copy these lines which I suggest doing um, if you go to my website and just download the, the loading wagon it's got the, the arms on it I'm not going to show how to do that because that's basic knowledge how to download stuff what you do is you actually just search for the foldable section like so and I'm just going to look for these object changes I could type these all out but it's, it's quicker and less Air if I actually copy these lines rather than uh, type them out and, and run into an issue and screw something up. So I'm just going to simply shift and I'm just going to hit home a couple times, control C. We just want the object changed and, and translation active. We want to actually move something, is what we're doing. So I'm going to come under here. I'm going to paste that in. Now we just want work area start. We're going to copy that, paste it there. Now, if we grab the original work area, if I get this over here, work area start, what I can do is I can actually tap on this on the Y column and I just hit Shift Control C. And if I come over here and I just hit Control V, it takes everything over. I don't have to take each number and enter it in now. By default, I think all giants will do is to the thousandth anyway, um, so it does no good to have those extra numbers. It just takes extra space up in the screen. In fact, since it's a zero, we can just even get rid of that as well. By default, usually you want like .60 or something, but once again, another video. <laughs> so we've got that line. So what that's going to do, it's going to tell this um, this piece of equipment when it loads in game that, hey, we want the X, the Y, and the Z to be at that number. We don't want to change the start, so that's not a big deal. We're going to keep that the same. In fact, I guess I didn't even have to put an object change because that's not going to change anyway. So that was a waste of time and explanation. So what we'll do is I'll actually just grab the work area width. Yeah, I just thought of that. You don't even need that. So we're going to go to work area width. We'll copy that. Paste that in. And then we'll go work area width. Same thing. Shift Control C come over to this guy I'm just gonna highlight control V now it's a negative 12 and negative 8 now we talked about how width gets changed by actually moving the X so I'm gonna control Z so what we'll do is instead of having a 24 width we're gonna make this guy 40 so if we just simply like we talked about that's 24 so if we want to make it 40 it's just gonna be a negative 20 we're not going to change our Z height because that will affect things as well. We just want to have the negative 8 in there. So what we'll do is hit shift, call them a couple times, copy this guy. Now we're going to take and we're going to go grab the height. So 
control C, control V, same thing here. We don't need to copy and paste because we know it's going to match 12 and negative 8. So we're just going to make this 20 and a negative 8. So we basically have our width and our height done. Um, now the things you have to remember is, okay, fine, you just made your work area wider, but the issue you're going to run into is if I re-enable the visibility on this effect node, if we take that start, oops, keep taking start width, and we make that a negative 20, see how our effect isn't going to reach? So that's going to look a little odd. We're going to be throwing this fertilizer out to here, but we're going to be fertilizing all the way to here. So basically you'd take this effect node and you would really stretch it out. Here's where you can kind of zoom in and see where we're going to lay. And this is where you can actually also manipulate this cube a little bit so we can stretch it like so. We're just about in the right spot, but if we take the effect node and simply take that scale, drop it down, drop it down some more. So let's say we want 0.5. And we don't have to get right on because sometimes you can overspray and not basically have what the actual worker is. We'll just make it a 1.45. So what we'll do is that is actually under effect, effect node. So if we come in and we copy this line, control C in, and we're actually going to if I search effect node just to make sure it's in in this uh, it's mapped I guess is what I'm saying so there's effect node effect node so it's basically saying that's what it's using for the spreader material type so if we just copy that name hit control C come back up to our fill unit area and we actually go okay we want to object change node effect node now we don't want translation active we want scale active like so. Um, I didn't really know I could look around for some uh, XML uh, ideas to actually find that, but I know it's scale active, so we're just going to simply uh, type scale in there instead of translation. And what we want to do is we want to match what we have there. So if we basically grab this effect node and I go to the scale, shift control C, or we could simply type it in as well because we're only changing the Z. Control V, like so. Once again, we don't need those extra lines. Or it's the X, not the Z. Man, I'm losing my mind today. I can't even talk. So basically, what's going to say is, as soon as this loads in, it's going to look for fill unit configurations. Now, if it had multiple ones, you'd have to go through and change them for each one if you wanted. But it's going to say, hey, let's change object work area width to translation a negative 20, 0, a negative 8 work height it's going to change it to 20 0 negative 8 and in the effect node it's going to scale it x 1.45 and then keep the y and the z at 1 so that will make it work wider now what you have to remember though is you have your AI um, so if you come in to the AI and look at it you have a size and an area the size I wouldn't worry about because that's basically just telling the AI how big this piece of equipment is it's not the work area itself but we'll go to work mar area marker and as you can see it's doing a simple way of things it's going left right back um, we won't have to change the back either because we're not really stretching that a node out we're just going to change our left and our right so that way when you hire the worker it's not going to say, hey, I'm, I'm only spreading this wide, and it's going to want to overspray, or maybe it'll even stop spraying. So it's pretty simple. Originally it was 12, we're going to make it 20. So let's just simply come into here. Let's grab these two lines, just copy them, paste it in, and if you actually look up AI, It's actually telling you area marker left, area marker right, area marker back. We don't need to change the back. All we need is the left. And if we come up and we go to left, and if we go right, like so, paste that in. And if we look back at our I3D, once again, left is 12, negative 7. So we're just going to simply make that 
if you see left, I have to make sure I do this correct because I, I flop these around. We're just going to go 20, negative 7, and then we're going to be a negative 20, a negative 7. So when I save this, we can go ahead and close everything out. I don't want to save that guy. Close that out. I don't want to save this. We go into the game. I think I've already got one purchased in that location. The only thing I didn't do is you'll want to make sure you change your working with and you just in your XML. I forgot to do that, but in fact we can actually do that real quick. Close that up. You want to make it so it's actually listing correctly. So your working width is now going to be and I think I actually struck that out because I was trying to do the fold thing. Control Q, we're gonna make this 40. Save that. Open the game again. <coughs> So we can go into the shop, fertilizer technology, over here is the one we modded. As you can see it says 40, original is 24. Nothing really in the shop to really change, but we're going to go ahead and go over. So this is the end game, and I'm trying to think if I drop it, it's just saying 40.2 ME CW. So if I come up and actually just hire this worker, as you can see he's spreading the 24 meters wide, I'm going to on hire, pull him out of the way, if we go to this guy, if I drop him, pick it back up, and I guess it's not telling us what the actual name is here, okay there it is, yeah, axis 40.2 wide is what I call it, I'm not going to be able to hire the worker here because it's going to say, hey, I don't, I can't fertilize in this area because it's already fertilized, but if I simply start my fertilizer up, you can see our effect node is wider, and our work area is wider like so and if you wanted to actually oops say hey let's test and see if this width will be right I can actually hire hopefully it turns to the left who knows what he's going to do there he goes should pick up and go back the other way at the right width now. Hopefully this makes sense. I, I said that's pretty much it for this video. I, I try to make it as quick as I can because using my videos go on and on and on so it looks like we can keep this one under a half hour. <laughs> and actually this is a little different one. I figured this is one you can actually change without having to make any kind of visible changes except for the effect node. So. I just wanted to show, like I said, just to save a little file space and, and it's just a simple thing of, yes, you have to go into Giants Editor and look at some things, but you can manipulate other stuff inside the uh, XML without actually having to do anything in Giants Editor and actually saving or changing any data files. You can utilize those system files to save a little, uh, little space is the biggest thing I'm trying to show here. So like I said, I think that's it for now. If you have any question, questions, always feel uh, free to, to comment below. Um, I'll make a, a link to my uh, website as well. That way you can download that loading wagon just to copy those lines. There's other equipment out there. I just knew I had that one in there that, that used the translation active. So that's why I picked that one. That's it for now. Uh, we'll catch you guys later.